In this video, we compare different paint filling and surface preparation techniques used in conjunction with laser engraving on unfinished wood to share the best methods and procedures for adding color to your laser projects. If you've ever tried to paint fill engravings on unfinished wood, you might have noticed that it doesn't work too well. Using a black sharpie, I've illustrated what happens when you try to paint wood like this without prepping it first. This is a sheet of Baltic birch which is a common material for lasering. You can see how the ink just bleeds into the surrounding fibers, giving a really blurry result. Even if the unfinished wood was masked off and then engraved, paint applied to it will still bleed through the fibers under the mask. You will see examples of this later in the video. In this video, I test using different methods to paint fill the same design with different levels of surface preparation to see what I can get away with to get a decent result. For the different fill methods, I tried spray painting, hand painting acrylics, and powder coating. For the wood preparation, I tried using a paint sealer, a matte clear coat, and nothing at all to see the differences. I'm sure there are a lot more methods in prep, but I felt this would be a good sampling for comparison. The material used for all these tests were blanks of 8th inch Baltic birch. All the pieces were masked and then engraved. I started with wood where the surface wasn't prepped at all. I gave the wood some fairly heavy coats of spray paint. When I removed the mask, you could really see how badly the paint soaked through the fibers, completely ruining the design. This would require quite a bit of sanding to try to remove the bleeding, assuming it didn't soak too deep. You're probably thinking, of course I got a bad result because I went too heavy with the paint. I know you can read my thoughts, boy. For the next test, I used the same non-prepped wood and gave it about three very light coats of spray paint, letting each coat flash off before applying the next. When I removed the mask on this piece, you can see that I got a really good result. If you look closer though, you can still see there was some bleeding, but not too bad. It's most noticeable around the wave at the bottom. I guess you can say the light coats weren't quite wet enough to really wick into the surrounding wood, while also acting as a sealer when each coat dried. For the next test, I wanted to try a water-based paint sealer. I use it all the time on MDF prior to painting to keep the fibers from lifting up. I gave the wood a single coat of sealer. The correct thing to do would be to give it a light sanding and then a second coat, but I wanted to see how it would perform with one coat. I pretty much wanted to know how little work I can get away with to get a good result. After the sealer was dry, I masked the piece off and then engraved it in the laser. I gave the wood a couple of heavy coats of spray paint like I did on the unprepped test. When I removed the mask, I fully expected a better result than the unprepped piece. That didn't happen though. It almost looked worse to me. I decided to run a second test using one coat of sealer, but using three light coats of spray paint. I figured I should at least get the same result as the unprepped piece with the light coats of spray paint. And after removing the mask, it appears that I did more or less get the same result. It looked good, but not perfect. I don't think the result justified the time spent using the sealer. For the next test, I used a generic can of matte finish clear coat. I used a matte finish because I wanted something that would still keep the overall look of the wood the same as the other tests. Just like with the sealer, I only gave the wood one coat of clear coat. Lightly sanding and applying another coat would probably be the right thing to do, but I wanted to keep this test consistent with the previous test. After the clear coat was dry, the wood was masked and then engraved. I once again gave the part a couple heavy coats of spray paint. And once again, the result wasn't stunning. However, it does look like the clear coat worked a little better than the previous tests, so I had high hopes of doing this again, but using lighter coats of paint. The next piece had the same single coat of clear coat applied, and once fully dry, the wood was given three light coats of paint. When the mask was removed, the result was perfect. I didn't see any evidence of paint bleeding. I tried hand painting acrylics as the next test. This method is really time consuming compared to spray painting, but is a popular method for paint filling, so I wanted to make sure it was included in the test. I didn't thin out the acrylic paint at all, and I applied a couple somewhat heavy coats. I knew what would probably happen by going a little thicker with the paint, but I wanted you to see this. When I removed the mask, we were left with a sort of good news, bad news situation. The good news was that the paint didn't bleed at all. The bad news was that it bonded a bit to the mask, so it was pulled out of the engraving a little in some spots. This is the problem with acrylic paint, as it retains a degree of flexibility when dry. I know from my old model making days, NOOD ALERT! 
that painting enamels by hand probably would have worked a lot better because enamel dries hard, but I've avoided them because of the smells and cleanup required. It's easy enough to take the spray painting I do outside, but I don't really have a well ventilated area inside to make painting with enamels practical. In keeping with the other tests, I thought I'd try hand painting acrylics again, but this time I thinned out the paint a little and applied a couple of thin coats. Even though I applied lighter coats that dried fast, thinning out the paint allowed it to absorb into the fibers. Unsurprisingly, the result was not very good. For the final test, I thought I'd use what I think of as a more unconventional method for paint filling. It's really not even paint filling. Some people call it powder coating, but I don't think that's a very accurate name given how the process works. However, I don't know a better name for it, so that's still what I'll call it. Anyway, I engraved out the design in the wood as usual. The wood is still masked like in the other tests, but this is less important for this method. However, the mask will still will keep this area surrounding the engraving perfectly clean. This process requires a few steps that requires the piece to stay in the laser without moving, so it was taped down just in case. After the wood is engraved, you need to fill the engraving with the powder coating powder. However, I'm actually not using that, but instead using an embossing powder. We had a blue color that was in the ballpark of the colors from the other tests, so I thought I'd try that. Embossing powder more or less should work the same as powder coating powder for this application. After filling the recessed engraved area, you just have the laser repeat the engraving, which melts the powder. If you do try this, obviously the laser settings are going to be different for this pass than it was for the original engraving, so testing is required to get everything dialed in. I've noticed that for this process, the lighter colors don't look as good as the darker colors, so I filled the engraving in again to see if I could get a little better result. When the mask was peeled off, you could see that the bleeding wasn't an issue. Obviously. Uh, duh. duh. The result wasn't perfect, however. You can see how the melting wasn't consistent across the design. Areas in the design were lighter or darker where the laser had to travel longer or shorter distances. This is most obvious at the top of the sun. From my experience, this isn't an issue using a dark colored powder. Still, the result was kind of cool. It had a nice glossy look to it. So, what did we learn? Using light coats when spray painting works so much better than going heavy, regardless of your surface prep. The best result to my test was prepping the wood with clear coat and then using light coats of spray paint. If I had to do any kind of production volume, this is the method I'd use. The powder coating method, by its very nature, can cause bleeding into the wood fibers, so it also gave a decent result without requiring any surface prep but I wouldn't want to use this method unless I was only doing a few pieces. Thanks for watching. Let us know in the comments what you think and if you found a better method that we didn't share here. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to get notified of future projects. We have more videos coming soon. Stay tuned.